Hello everyone, welcome back to a Brushes and Money's video. Today we are kickstarting off a new video tutorial series. We're going to be doing uh, coloring skin tones and I'm going to show you how to color or how I color the light tone, the medium tone, and the dark tone. Now for this video itself, we're only focusing on the light tones first and I'm gonna, going to be releasing two consecutive uh, videos on medium tone and dark tone. Now of course, just to preface, there are multiple skin tones out there and just for the purpose of this tutorial video, we just want to focus on kind of like the beginner steps of light, medium, and dark. Now we're going to do today light tones. Now you're probably wondering why I have three circles. Um, well the first circle I'm going to show you how I color in a light skin tone with only Faber-Castell Polychromo, so just pencil crayon. The second one I'm going to show you how I do it with the Copic markers. And the third, because I am a mixed media artist, I'm going to show you how I color it with watercolor and the Faber-Castell Polychromo. So we're going to have three different kind of mini tutorials within one big tutorial and I hope that this will be kind of like your ultimate skin guide to drawing skin or coloring in skin. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the first circle and this is just with the polychromos. Now for the light tones, uh, the colors that I use all, pretty much for every single light tone or light skinned person that I draw, I will use these uh, five colors. So we've got the light flesh, which is the kind of the light peach um, color. We also have cinnamon and I use this quite a lot actually. This is probably the pencil or the color that I use quite often especially um, not only in terms of the light tone but also for the medium tone as well. I also use accents of the medium flesh which is a more pinky dark tone color and for kind of the darker aspects of things in terms of the shadowing I use the walnut brown. I will also use the white color just to kind of blend at the kind of the highlighted areas of the skin. Um, so the white pencil crayon or the white polychromos is pretty good in terms of blending some colors together as well. Now if you want you can also add kind of color accents to the skin but this is kind of more advanced. You can add yellow, you can add purple, red, green, blue. There's all kinds of things you can do and this really depends on the lighting that your um, your character has um, or your reference photo. So really study how your reference photo looks like and you can determine which sort of color accent you want to add. But for this sort of uh, demonstration we're just going to be using these basic colors right here. First things first, you want to take your lightest tone which in this case will be the light flesh color and you want to just simply color in the space or the subject. Kind of like a tip, you want to use a very light hand, you don't want to put so much pressure down. Basically the overall goal here is just to color in and add a bit of color into the area that you're coloring in. Another tip would be just to be mindful of the source of light, so wherever the light hits the face of your subject, you want to make sure that this is going to be in a highlighted area. You can either leave the space blank for now or you can go back later on and color it in with a white pencil crayon. So once you've colored it in a flat surface of your light tone, you want to start working in the medium tones, which in this case would be the medium flesh and the cinnamon. So I typically use the cinnamon first and I start to just sketch in the darker areas of the subject and then I will highlight sort of the uh, cinnamony colors with the medium flesh, which is more of a pinkish tone. And this is where you can really start to see that there's a gradual buildup of a shadow happening. Another word of advice would be to take your light flesh tone again, which is your lightest tone, and go back and start to blend in the medium tones with the light tones together. The third step would be to take your dark shadow color, so in this case would be the walnut brown, and start to sketch in the darker areas of the subject. Now because I am drawing on watercolor paper, you're going to see that there's a lot of kind of um, lines in the drawing. It's not as smooth as I want it to be. So kind of a trick would be to draw in circular motions and in this way we'll guarantee that you're kind of drawing within the grooves and like the edges and the curves of the watercolor paper as well. At this point in the drawing you also want to start to apply more pressure on your pencil. So mixing in the dark tones of the walnut brown together with the mid tones of the of the cinnamon and the medium flesh, you can start to apply more pressure and in this case you can actually start to blend in the colors as well. 
For those of you guys who are a little bit more advanced, this would be sort of the point in time where you can also start to play around with the accent color. So add touches of purple, yellow, red, um, blue, green. You can start to just kind of add this in within the shadows, within the mid-tone range, and kind of blend it uh, together with the other natural colors. The fifth step would be to just basically keep repeating the same thing that you're doing. You're taking your mid-tones and you're taking your dark tones and you're just kind of blending it in together by adding layer after layer. Something that I really like to do afterwards is uh, take my highlighter color, which is the white pencil, and you'll see that I'm just kind of going over some of the rough spots of the drawing, things where sort of the blending is not as great as it should be, or if you want to add a highlighted area to the, the, the space, you can just use the white pencil crayon to really lay it on thick. So in this case, you wanna add a lot of pressure and you can start to lighten up certain areas of the skin as well. And that's basically all there is to coloring with polychromos. You uh, rinse and repeat what you're doing by blending the colors, adding layer upon layer until you're really happy with the final result. Again, just tip, start off with a light drawing and then progress into a more pressure drawing or pressurized, I don't know how to really say that, but just apply more pressure as you go along and you want to apply more of a saturated color in that area. So for the next circle, we're going to be doing it with Copic markers, and these are the three markers I use the most for skin tones, um, for the light skin tone. Now, of course, uh, just like anything else, you can add accents of pink, of orange, of yellow, of purple, but these are really the basics that I draw with, and we have first the eggshell color. I know some of you guys are probably familiar with this. It's probably one of the lightest colors I have and works really well when you're trying to get a pale, soft, light skin tone. The next one I use is the cotton pearl. Now the cotton pearl has a little bit of a darker shade or tone to it and it's kind of a pinkish almost, like a yellowish pinkish kind of um, tone which looks really nice together with the eggshell. And then the last one that I use quite often is the soft sun. This I use for the shadowy aspect. If I want to get a little bit of a darker tone to the skin, I will use soft sun. Soft sun has a bit of a yellowish tinge to it as well um, which looks really nice uh, for shadows. Now coloring with markers is not really any different in terms of the color scheme that you select. So you want to start off with your lightest tone, which in this case is the eggshell. And you basically just want to color in the area, of course, minding your sort of light source. And um, then you can start to gradually add in the mid-tone and the dark tone. I like to use the brush side of the marker just because it's, I find it easier to blend in the colors. So especially when you're working in the dark tone and the medium tone uh, in your like subject area, you want to be able to control it and to be able to blend. So I use a lot of the, the flick of the wrist motion in order to really blend in together the different tones. And I think that this works pretty well. Something that I typically do as well is just go back and keep working in the mid-tones and the dark tones together. And this is basically how I will blend. I'll use the flick of the wrist and I will blend in the dark on top of the medium. And then I'll go back and add the medium tones and um, kind of blend in to make a smoother surface in between the dark, medium, and the light. You can also use a blending marker. However, I don't typically use this as much just because I have chosen colors that go pretty well together and are easy to blend together as well. So now for the third circle, we're going to be doing a mixed media uh, approach, which is what I typically do for my mixed media work. I will set a base of watercolor and then I will draw upon it with the Faber-Castell polychromos. And in recent light, I've also been drawing with the luminance pencils. Uh, so I'm going to do both actually. So I'm going to show you how this looks and which colors I use for that. Now for the watercolors, I'll show you my set. I use a combination of this flesh tint color. This is actually from a no-name brand of um, the, my local art store, Brusna. So there's a flesh tint, and for you guys, you guys can probably find something similar at your local art store. I also use this color here, which is from um, uh, Schminka. It looks pretty similar to here, except it has a little bit more of a pinkish, orangey hue to it. So it's kind of almost like a mid-tone, and I could mix it pretty well with other colors. This is actually the Naples yellow reddish color from Schminka. Another color that I always always use is actually this color right here which is Opera Rose from Windsor & Newton. This is a fantastic color and it mixes pretty well with the flesh tint color. 
another one that I seldom use, but sometimes depending on the actual color of the of like the the reference photo like what the skin color looks like i might add a yellow to it and this is actually i believe i, I don't remember the name from schminka i think it might be the rutile yellow or the um naples yellow and i don't really remember exactly which one um but it's one of those two and i also use that the other one that I use to mix in dark tones um, would be this color right here, which is a bit hard to see. It's quite dark. It is a brown. I think it's the Van Dyke brown from Schminka. I don't remember, again, because there's actually no like indication once you unwrap it what color, like if there's a code or anything. I don't see a code. Um, but this might be the Van Dyke brown or the Burnt Umber, and I think it's the Van Dyke. Um, so I use this to mix together with my flesh tone and also with the rose to create a darker skin tone. Apart from that, I will also uh, typically use for the Faber-Castell, I will go back to the cinnamon color, I'll go back to the uh, walnut brown color and also sometimes the light flesh color, but I'll, ultimately I don't really need to use this because of the watercolor itself. As for the additional luminance pencils, uh, so we use, I use this one here. So luminance is actually a fantastic pencil to help blend and smooth um, some of the kind of the hard surfaces of the skin. This is from Carandash. I don't know if I pronounce that pr properly. It is um, the luminance collection, which is fantastic and I'm so in love. So I use the Burnt Sienna 10, 10%, Burnt Sienna 10%, which is a nice color. I will also use the um, the Burnt Sienna 50%, so it's a little bit of a darker shade, so it can almost see, you could almost see that there's a resemblance in terms of the colors to the Faber-Castell. I will also sometimes use the Burnt Ochre 50%, which adds kind of a yellowish orangey hue, um, could mix up, so you can basically blend it with um, kind of the orangey aspect or yellowy aspect of a skin tone. And then sometimes I will also add in the Slate Grey from Luminance for kind of like the darker shadows, um, like the darkest of the darkest shadows of the face. Um, but today we're just going to be using a couple of these ones, the Burnt Sienna ones, and together with the Faber-Castell and the watercolor. So let's get started! The very first thing I always like to do is I start off with my flesh tint color uh, watercolor and I just apply this as a smooth base over the entire subject. I really like using watercolor as a base. I think that it helps give a smooth, delicate aspect to the skin tone. You can definitely cover a lot more ground as well compared to just using polychromos or marker. What I typically like to do is once I cover it with the lightest tone of watercolor, I will um, apply more darker tones, so a mixture of the Opera Rose and the Van Dyke Brown together with the flesh tint color, I will already start to apply it directly when the paper is still wet. So I just like to already mix in the different tones together before the paper is dry. Once the paper is dry, I start to apply my Faber-Castell polychromos together with the luminance pencils, and I will typically start with the mint tones, and actually probably only use the mint tones, so like the cinnamon color and the walnut brown of the Faber-Castell, I will just start to add in or flesh out the shadowy areas, and then afterwards I will go on top with my luminance pencils, such as the um, Burnt Sienna, I believe, it's the 10% and then the 50%, and I basically just kind of expand upon what I already drew with my Faber-Castell polychromos. And at this point I will basically just keep blending in the mid-tones of the polychromos and the luminance together with the watercolor. I may or may not add another layer of watercolor on top, it really depends what I'm trying to achieve. And something I also like to do is I like to just kind of cover the highlighted areas with the white luminance pens pencil. This works really fantastic, uh, especially if you want to get a nice crisp clean white area or highlighted area definitely try out the luminance pencils you can either use the white polychromos but i find that the luminance stands out a lot more and it has a lot more pigment compared to the white uh, polychromos pencil and exactly like the first bubble that we did with the polychromos, you basically rinse and repeat your technique. You apply layer upon layer, you can work uh, with the luminance, the polychromos, the watercolor, and you can just keep building up that pigment. So to basically summarize, these are the materials that I use for the different types of 
uh, skin tones that I want to achieve. So we've got the polychromos, we've got the Copic markers, then we've got the mixed media watercolor with the luminance pencils and the polychromos together. Now the sort of style that I typically always use is the mixed media one and this is what I, I pretty much almost always use in my paintings. Marker style is more so when I want to do kind of like a cartoony aspect or just to have fun and doodle in my sketchbook, I typically go for the marker. And you can see it looks very different compared to these two because I either don't have the same color tones as I use for the polychromos and the mixed media. So it will look a little bit more of a yellow tinge to the actual color. Um, but I think it works really great if you're looking for kind of like a manga style or just like a cartoon style, the Copic markers definitely work for that. And then the polychromos just regular polychromos. I rarely use this, uh, but I just wanted to show you kind of like the light tones, uh, the sort of colors that I use to mix up with the light tones without any other elements. Now, um, again, with the extreme here, with extreme darkness, I, I did more of an extreme example for the purpose of this uh, video tutorial. Typically, I don't go as dark as this. I will stick to a cinnamon just a lightly kind of toasted cinnamon, I guess you can say, rather than full-on walnut brown. So I hope you really enjoyed this uh, tutorial video. I will be posting all of the colors and the materials down below in the video description for each of the three different bubbles here. Uh, please give this a big thumbs up and I will also release the other videos for the dark tone and for the medium tone, uh, which will be released on a weekly basis. So hopefully you guys will like this. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you like these tutorials. I'm actually wanting to do a lot more tutorials now. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna give this a go. So. Uh, do give this a big thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!